Uh, I welcome everybody to this today's webinar on uh, which has been organized by Indian Podiatry Association and one of the branches of Indian Podiatry Association as Indian Physio Podiatry Physiotherapy Association. This is one of the new association which we have just launched uh, uh, with people dealing in uh, mostly the physiotherapists. This field is very importantly needed by all the surgeons, plastic surgeons, the vascular surgeons, even physicians and diabetologists who are working into diabetic foot care or podiatry. Because we know that podiatry physiotherapy is one of the very important fields of medicine where a lot of uh, things in biomechanics of the foot we are neglected. This, this is one of the topics which is really neglected and a lot of people don't know about these things. Also offloading and then podiatry and foot examination, uh, what happens in podiatry. And then there are sports injuries. There are a lot of patients heal, uh, coming to our clinic with heel pain. And then very important and one of the very uh, uh, important uh, uh, problem the patient has that prosthosis and orthosis. This is also very important when the healing phase, when we do all the surgeries and offloading has been done, even after a below knee amputation or even a forefoot amputation or a midfoot amputation, even symes or hind foot amputation, there are a lot of new orthosis and prosthosis available, which uh, uh, Vipin will be uh, dealing today, which can really make the patient mobile and they will be very uh, nice field to know about this. So we have four speakers today and uh, I'll come down to later uh, into this. We have Dr. Ravi Kamipli, about, about one of the moderators for this. He's a vice president of Indian Podiatry Association and he's the moderator today. He's an infectious disease and lifestyle modification uh, doctor dealing in, in USA. He's uh, placed in Lima, Ohio. And uh, one of his very important field of new work is into keto medicine and lifestyle modification into metabolic syndrome. And he'll cover something, he'll speak for about five to 10 minutes into that. And we have second speaker, Dr. Arun Maya, sir. He's the Dean of the Manipal Group of Hospitals and Head of Department of Diabetic Research Center in Manipal Hospital. And also he is President of Indian Podiatry Association Karnataka Chapter and Chairman of the Indian Podiatry Physiotherapy Association, which is a new association come. So I welcome Dr. Arun Maya and Dr. Ravi Kamipli as my co-moderators for today's webinar. We have Dr. Dhara, uh, who's, uh, uh, she's the uh, physiotherapist working in, so she's working in, uh, she's the first speaker. She's in Surat and uh, Dr. Dhara is practicing in Surat and we'll come to her slide, yes. She's a Master of Physiotherapy in Orthopedic, certified by Philip Weissale uh, from Australia. She's expert in customized foot orthotics for orthopedic and diabetic foot condition. She's also specialized in foot and ankle physiotherapy. She's, she has a clinical experience of more than 12 years and treated more than about 10,000 patients into this. She's the owner of the Two Care Super Specialty Center, Surat, and the first podiatry practitioner in Gujarat and uh, her husband is an orthopedic surgeon and she has a lot of uh, papers into this, into foot problems. And uh, she's also the executive member and joint secretary of Indian Podiatry uh, Physiotherapy Association. So I welcome Dr. Dhara um, for this presentation. And just to, name, uh, just to name other speakers for this, we have another presentation by Dr. Vandana Tanwar from Delhi. She's, she'll be talking on examination and uh, podiatry in sports medicine. Then we have another speaker, Dr. Gurleen. Uh, she is the podiatrist from UK and uh, she'll be talking on uh, uh, causes of heel pain. And this is uh, because Shailesh she's not over here. So she's joining and taking a chapter for a topic for that. And then the fourth topic will be importance of prosthesis and orthosis in podiatry by Bipin uh, Ladumor, he, he, he's a uh, physiotherapist who an uh, ONP guy is working in Surat with Dr. Shalesh Chotala. The topic for Dr. Dhara is uh, very unique, the examination and treatment for foot problems, because this is something very important that all of us should know when a patient comes that what are the foot problems and how we have to examine the patient with this in podiatry. So I welcome Dr. 
Dhara Parikh uh, to this webinar and take the first topic. Thank you. So, um, as as we are about to start it, um, um, like uh, uh, Dr. Suri was mentioning earlier, I'll, uh, I mean, like as an infectious disease and a wound care doctor and a, a doctor who deals with uh, obesity medicine and uh, being a part of a, a priority organization and trying to uh, transfer knowledge uh, of uh, the spectrum of healthcare delivery, uh, we are very happy to be starting this uh, series of uh, uh, care delivery processes using this unique organization for uh, knowledge transfer across India. And thank you for all the uh, speakers today. And I just wanted to bring one point and then I will uh, let uh, Dara take over and start her uh, presentation. The main thing uh, when we do any of uh, things that we do is uh, we forget that nutrition is a root cause of everything that happens to us as human beings. And uh, one thing that boggles most people is why some people get obese and some people are thin. And we have come up with this whole concept of trying to deliver uh, a mass medicine mindset wherein we do a study of a uh, thousand people and give a recommendation. But the problem is we unique human beings have unique problems. So. When, when it comes to macronutrients, when carbohydrates, proteins, and fat, fat does not stimulate insulin, and protein stimulates insulin 40%, whereas carbohydrates stimulate it a lot. So the food that we eat, when we eat processed food, which mostly is carb-loaded, then it becomes a problem where we stimulate the insulin a lot. So once we take a food material that stimulates insulin, so each person has a unique metabolic mechanism wherein some people are insulin hyper secretors. When they secrete more insulin, after you take a carb load, so we might be okay for an hour or two, but when the insulin hyper secretion happens, that glucose is then turned into fat and we store it. But say for the same person in four hours, for some people later, you might end up having hunger cramps. And then if you try to fight it, and then your metabolism goes bad. So it's all about what we do with, what happens to us with the insulin, with what we eat is more important. So carbs stimulate more, protein 40%, fat like three or four percent. So with that knowledge uh, idea, I just want to just, just throw in these nuggets of these things in nutrition, but we will have a, a scheduled lecture on nutrition on different topics, including say intermittent fasting, how to do it, um, high fat nutrition, why should we do it? What are different aspects of uh, low carb keto? So. So those are the questions that uh, we have a separate group for this apart from IPA, where we have around uh, 225 doctors and uh, uh, that, there, that is nutritional focus. But here we are going to be focused on foot and ankle and wound care mostly. And uh, uh, I'm happy to then uh, go ahead and invite uh, uh, Dara to uh, take away at her presentation, please. And uh, thank you for taking time, Dara. And, uh, uh, please start your presentation. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Ravi, uh, Should I Dara share one... my screen? Yes. Uh, Dara, Dara, can I introduce uh, Dr. Palvi? She is also uh, yeah, yeah. in this webinar. She is one of the moderators here. So Dr. Palvi is a very senior uh, physiotherapist. She is working in uh, as a foot care specialist. She is working in Mumbai uh, for an introduction for all the audience. And she is also the uh, Vice President of Indian Podiatry Physiotherapy Association, which is uh, has been developed under IPA. And it, she was the main person behind, along with Shalesh and Dara, 
who <clears throat> uh, and we discussed about how to uh, devise this association and come forward and bring all people together working in this field and like minded people who are more interested in podiatry work so dr palvi uh, uh, thanks to you for taking all the initiative to start this ippa program and i think uh, we will go to great heights uh, by all the hard work by you and dara and shalesh what you have been putting in so i uh, congratulate you and welcome to this webinar dr dara you can thank you so much sir you can share your screen dara yes sir good afternoon everyone uh, today i am going to cover for the examination and the treatment part of the foot which is the foundation of human body and specially i am more concentrating on how physiotherapist can cooperate uh, podiatry practice in their already uh, practicing physiotherapy so let's start uh, we all know what is the podiatry podiatry is the study of diagnosis medical and surgical treatment of foot ankle disorders and uh, a major part of the podiatry can be divided into the two things there's the orthopedic foot problem and the diabetic foot problem diabetic foot problem and the diabetic uh, foot analysis offloading has been already discussed by our uh, physician and the uh, surgeon uh, in uh, our previous webinar so i'll be more concentrating on the orthopedic foot problem which will be uh, physiotherapist can uh, practice in their uh, clinics so the major foot problem either is the diabetic foot problem or the orthopedic foot problem they are quite a bit related with the bow mechanical problem bow mechanical if bow mechanics is not proper is mal aligned then the chances of uh, having problem pain are more so in our clinic uh, true care foot clinic we are providing podiatry services with the unique combination of physiotherapy by virtue of being trained and certified and backed by world renowned uh, podiatrist dr philip basinti so now why foot is uh, foundation of human body like if we compare with the car uh, if the wheel get punctured uh, what will happen to the car it will get rattle right so so similarly the feet is a foundation of our body so if feet are damaged or if they are not proper the whole body is going to affect so over here we can see that uh if the feet is not proper over here you you can see that the arch is getting dropped there's the over pronating feet that can affect on the knee hip spine even at the pelvis and spine levels so that's the reason that we have to have proper attention on our feet so uh the bow mechanics is the root part of the podiatry but over here uh, as dr arun maya sir has already taken bow mechanics in detail in the previous seminars so i'll be taking forward uh, after that that will be the examination part and the treatment part of the podiatry treatment which generally i practice in my clinic so what is a foot examination how foot examination differ with the other joint examination uh, the history though always we take for the all uh, joints but over here uh, the one thing i would like to mention that once the patient is entering on our on our cabin our eyes has to be on their feet so at least before they get the feet uh, opposite to us we should have some idea about the feet that how the feet is uh, it, it is falling inside outside uh, is there any swelling or is there any deformity you can see how is the gait pattern so till the time the patient get seated we can get at least some idea of it the history portion will be similar for all the joints like uh, uh, knee and all we take uh, surgical history medical history and all uh, but over here like in the podiatry treatment podiatry examination the footwear examination or the analysis is the also key part why footwear analysis we also need to analyze the old footwear we we can see the worn pattern the, how the patient's old footwear is wearing that can give us idea about that uh, where exactly the patient is striking the heel uh, where it, it is getting uh, more loaded so that can also give us idea about the pathology the other thing that uh, like the some people having clot toes and the other deformities the size of the shoes if if the patient is wearing the wrong size shoes 
so that can also give us a quite a bit idea so footwear analysis is the unique part of uh, podiatry examination then we can move towards the clinical examination and last the uh, pressure mapping in the traditional way or the digital way so if we move towards the clinical examination the clinical examination of foot is not only concentrated on the foot it has to be from feet up to your spine because it is the is the chain we can't just really concentrate on the feet we have to look for the feet issues like the how the toes are like any cloying hammer toe hallux valgus how the toe nails are so we have to check for the toes forefoot uh, ankle joint but parallelly the ankle joint is also connected with the knee like uh, as an example if our ankle is getting uh, pronated if our subtalar joint is getting pronated is not the only joint is pronated it also carrying the tibia femur with it so the angle at the knee level hip level also will get changed and sometimes that also happen that if the patient has a scoliosis or something is already there in the spine can also affect the feet alignment so to analyze the chain we need to examine from the feet to the spine now the hallux valgus if if we concentrate on the toes the hallux rigidus it is also very important because our great toe movement is needed for the propulsion on the toe of face we need this uh, great toe range so are there, as is the range normal is there hill hallux rigidus where the movement is uh, almost nil if it is the limiters then the partial range of motion will be there and the normal range you can see over here then other observation we need to do for the toes that is the uh, claw toes and the hammer toes the claw toes where the mtb joint in the hyperextension and the ip in the flexion is something like this and the hammer toes is something like the uh, mtp will be hyperextended and the pip only will be flex dip will be again hyperextended so why this deformities are important to see because Uh, when we see such deformity in the patient it also affect it also help us to decide about their treatment portion that how which type of shoes we need to prescribe in a specific type of condition because this type of patient will always have a possibility to develop corn callus ulcers on the uh, part which is already in flexion position or the deformed position uh, like in the claw to hammer toe they can have a ulcer or the corn on the tip of the toe condition the diabetics are more prone to it because they can they have the uh, peripheral neuropathy and because of that the chances are more so this condition we have to always look out for then the any four foot deformity is there we have to check for the four foot varus or valgum is there then important thing the profile of the foot because our foot has to our weight has to be distributed equally on all the part of the foot if the foot profile is neutral neutral means we will will be having a, a well pronounced uh, medial arch so if it is a neutral arch all the weight will be distribu distributed equally all around the foot but if it is not neutral then uh, if it is going inside is called pronation where our arch will be lower medial arch will be lower or it can be flattened and our weight will be more concentrated on the inner aspect of uh, feet where the inner structures like the tibialis posterior navicular will be more loaded and the pathology over there can be more then we we need to look for the uh, any if the patient has a high arch supinatory profile the high arch means the supinatory profile where your uh, subtalar joint will be in the supination and the tibialis posterior will you can see the pronounced tibialis posterior which will be uh, acting very hardly to maintain the high arch so this is the profile of the foot uh, now when we see the neutral alignment our calcaneum is always uh, into 3 to 4 degree uh, inversion is our neutral profile so when this is our neutral profile we always strike our heel on the outer side outer aspect of the heel because our calcaneum is slightly inclined so when when we walk on the natural surfaces like sand mitti kind of surfaces the surface can take up the space of our arch okay but when we walk on the hard surface where the things come up that now we are striking outer side of the heel because of the new natural lateral heel strike but to touch the ground to come into the contact with the ground we need to 
over pronate like the pronation range has to be more to be in touch with the ground so it is called the excess compensation so that is the reason right now the kids even uh, elderly people are developing uh, low arch feet or the flat feet kind of condition are commonly seen so this unnatural surfaces due to the civilization is responsible for this uh now in a weight bearing we need to see the uh, in the four foot and rear foot how is the weight distribution we we can check the loading also in the standing position clinically that uh, are we going to lift that toes so if the four foot weight is too much then we won't be able to lift that toe when the patient is standing otherwise normally we can uh, lift it slightly uh after that the positioning of foot that i already explained uh, we also need to make the patient walk on the heel and the toes because that will give us idea about the muscle power and the functional range of motion uh, also look out for some deformities like the plateau where the transverse arch will be completely flat, flattened and the metatarsal will be stretched so you will have that uh, all the toes will be spread out and uh, it is called play feet the rock bottom foot really uh, mostly seen in the uh, advanced diabetic neuropathy where the talus get collapsed and you will get that rocker kind of thing under the sole so this type of foot deformity we need to concentrate because all the examination if proper then the treatment we we can decide properly about the treatment the shoe prescription and all the range of motion we need to check the plantar dorsi inversion inversion uh, special test whenever we need to carry out for the any ankle instability ligament injuries like that uh surface anatomy like we look for the any tenderness temperature of the body uh, temperature very very uh, important for for the diabetic foot like uh, dr anand maya has already explained now uh, we'll move towards the uh, plantar pressure mapping uh, over here uh, you can see the harris mat which is the traditional way of uh, measuring plantar pressure which give us the idea about the length or width and high pressure areas so this is a basic and cheaper technique to do the plantar pressure mapping in your clinic the another advanced techniques are the baropodometry platform uh, i personally use this one in my clinic uh, they comes in the different dimension and the cost will vary according to the dimension uh, they have the sensor on the plate the people will be standing and walking on that plantar pla uh, plantar sorry pressure plates and uh, we will be getting uh, uh, analysis gait analysis standing analysis pressure areas uh and a load distribution on our software uh, then uh, the next one will be the sensory treadmills which is also the advanced one you know, where we can do the posture analysis and it will be very good for the athletes to uh, examine the running pattern and walking pattern and uh, the latest one uh, sorry not not this one this is the latest one where we will having uh, sensor in soles we'll have a hundreds of uh, sensors on that and uh, it can give a precise analysis inside the patient shoes to check the exam develop in real time and to record the data uh, flow up to 4 hours uh, the photo scans are also available nowadays uh, which use laser lights to uh, have a dimension of the foot and the pressure areas so this type of analysis is very important when we need to customize the orthotic it gives us idea about the Uh, all pressure loading the gait pattern so where exactly we need to correct we can understand from this uh, clinical examination and this advanced tools so now if we move towards the podiatry treatment uh, i'll be uh, mainly taking the generalized uh, treatment protocol which i follow in my clinic for the patients uh, because we have the time constraints so we can't go into the depth uh, generally with any physiotherapy specialized physiotherapy i have planned i decide for my patients so this is the very important part of the uh, my treatment protocol i customize the foot orthotic i i, I give them the shoe or footwear prescription uh, sometimes the patient is a diabetic or the wide feet profile then i have to also have to provide the diabetic shoes or the sandals uh, and many time i give a customized orthotic slippers or ready to wear orthotic slippers for the home use Uh, which type of orthotic correction i use usually available in the market there are the over the counter in stores like metro mochi all they have the cheaper and comfort base so they are not the corrective one and not customized one uh, again the local arch like surgical people are giving that just uh, arch pad in the any ordinary footwear so they are also not advisable very old technique and not much effective 
then the best one the custom uh, molded orthotics completely customized it can be done by plant, uh, plaster mold standing foot impressions and most recently with this uh, uh, computer use of computer that's the barrow pedometry on all and the last one the prefabricated custom molded orthotics like 10 years back when me and dr pallavi were uh, practicing together in mumbai we used to have uh, uh, this prefabricated custom molded orthotics we mainly practicing on this so these are the prefabricated custom molded orthotics uh, these are designed by podiatrists so generally it is get imported so they have the different attachment like a 2 degree 4 degree uh, pyrus valgus they have the metatarsal pads and all they inbuilt also have some degrees of correction so after clinical examination if you don't have anything being a physiotherapist if you don't want to invest right now for any uh, any kind of barotomatic platform on all this can be a very good option to uh, work on the uh, musculoskeletal condition maybe for the diabetic foot condition it is a challenge you sh you should be knowing that how to deal with uh, uh, this kind of uh, orthotic to treat the diabetic foot thing. otherwise for the diabetic foot thing this cad cam orthotic are the best the cad cam orthotic i uh, right now i am using this cad cam orthotic where with the barrow podometry i uh, analyze the patient's feet and uh, with the software i take the data on my uh, designing software i design my orthotic on the computer the, you can see over here is the computer designed orthotic and after milling after milling the orthotic look like something like this so they are the milling machine which uh, do the 3d printing kind of work and cow the insoles according to my design so these are the best when we need to do a uh, major offloading for the plantar ulcers corns and uh, other conditions and again for the musculoskeletal also these are the most advanced technique there are also uh, some ready to wear orthotic footwear available uh, which can be also very good for the heel pain and arch pain kind of moderate conditions uh, where you don't want to go for the completely customized slippers these are the best option and we can also go with the cad cam orthotic uh, also we can make slippers from that on uh, the offloader diabetic uh, footwear and orthotics sometime people come patient come to me for the some kind of pain like a musculoskeletal condition but uh, with history and all we need to find that uh, if the patient is diabetic then we need to take care of that that we have to give a, a corone kind of material we need to give a that kind of diabetic footwear we need to make them aware that what uh, what kind of precaution they need to take it even the condition right now is not uh, any diabetic peripheral neuropathy or ulcers over here you can see there are the toe filler uh, insoles uh, in the amputated cases so to understand the examination and the treatment uh, i would like to brief about few of my uh, cases so it will be easy to connect with the examination and the treatment over here one of my patient 36 year old female taking uh, painkillers since almost 3 years on and off and she was having knee pain since 3 years even difficulty in uh, walking any exercises climbing up uh, so the patient has already consulted many orthopedic surgeon but not getting relief uh, so now in that condition when patient came to me i did the clinical evaluation i found out there's some problem with the feet i did the foot scanning uh, and uh, after that i have checked that it, it is completely overpronated the Uh, inner side of medial weight was around 70% body weight was coming on the medial side of the foot so after that i have designed the foot orthotic for her uh, i have advised her that which type of shoes she need to wear it and i have corrected her feet the feet was uh, in inverted sorry feet was pronated because of that the tibia also were internally rotated the femur were internally rotated the, the patella is a different joint is a different bone so the patellar tracking was not proper so the correcting the feet has needed the patellar tracking and that that helped her to relieve her knee pain so she was completely out of her pain within a month uh, then another another one is the ankle pain again you can see over here it is completely overpronated and uh, he is a 77 years old old and again diabetic he has come to me fit and swall uh, swall was provided with the ankle support and uh, i have given the stability shoes again my examination goes a similar in the previous method 
I have customized the orthotic and uh, he was completely better in the 15 days. Uh, this is my diabetic foot patient uh, on the forefoot area and unable to walk. He was, uh, he was operated for one or two times. So this was my treatment for him that I have given the offloading uh, completely customized foot orthotic with the rocko bottom uh, diabetic foot sandals. And this you can see the result after two months. Uh, like over here, you can see the arch pain patient. Again, uh, the patient was having, taking painkillers for more than a year or something. And uh, with proper foot orthotic, and I've also suggested some physiotherapy exercises because when patient is completely over pronating sinciors, they have the muscle imbalance of the medial structures and the lateral structures. So I have uh, suggested her the home protocol exercise because patient was not local. And uh, with orthotic uh, shoes and slippers, she got 90% uh, relief in 15 days, which she was suffering from a uh, full one year. Uh, uh, this case is very interesting. He himself is an orthopedic surgeon uh, from Mumbai, very long orthopedic surgeon, and uh, was suffering from the forefoot pain. Uh, it was a sharp shooting pain, which was not uh, making him comfortable. Uh, he himself tried many medications and all. The pain was not uh, coming down. So now we analyzed the, her, his footwear and all. He was a little short stature uh, person. So he always preferred... Uh, high heeled uh, shoes, uh, high heeled formal shoes. He also need uh, always wearing a narrow kind of shoes. So what uh, that happened that because of the uh, ill-fitting footwear, he developed that uh, neuro Martin's neuroma. So I analyzed that and I've given at that time I was not using uh, plantar pressure map and all. So at that time I have dealt with uh, prefabricated custom molded orthotics. Uh, and I have given metatarsal pad with a few degrees of parallel alignment. I have given the wide shoes. Uh, so with all the footwear modification and the orthotic correction, he was completely out of pain and he was quite impressed because of like he being in such position was not able to relieve with the pain. So that's the reason why podiatry, it is very, very important. The knowledge of footwear, the knowledge of uh, orthotic, it is very important when we are treating any foot, either it's a diabetic or either is a orthopedic. We are the heel pain, again, the similar kind of, uh, the patient has already taken steroid injections uh, two to three times and then uh, she has come to me. So with orthotic, even no physiotherapy, she got relief only with the podiatry treatment. So uh, I hope that uh, you all have enjoyed the examination and the treatment portion and how we can carry it out with our physiotherapy clinic. So thank you everyone from bottom of my feet. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dhara. It was a very nice presentation. And uh, mainly we have to, everyone has to know that how we have to do the foot examination. And also when the patient comes, whether the foot is in the equinus phase or in the valgus phase. So this is a very important, the simple examination if we can do from the posterior side and know what is the, how the posterior part of the heel is there, whether the foot is going into supination or yeah. pronation, that is very important to find out in diabetic patient because where the pressure will be high. So according to that, we can devise our orthotics. And I think this is a very good take home message for the audience that how the, the normal biomechanics of the foot by simple examination, by simple looking at the foot, uh, the role of the plantar scanning and uh, uh, plantar pressure testing comes secondary. But when the patient comes, how we can do that? And that is very important when we have to bring the foot in the biomechanical equilibrium phase, because that is where our ulcers will heal, patient's pain will go away, and the patient's foot will be in the biomechanical neutral phase. That is very important. Also, uh, there, it was a very important slide in the last, which you showed about Morton's neuroma. This is also one of the things which a lot of us, we miss it uh, initially. Whenever the patient comes, we can say it's neuropathy or you might have got some injuries or all. But a lot of people have Morton's neuroma and they suffer a lot for many, many years. They keep on uh, walking here and they keep on... Yes, even doctors also miss it, like orthopedic doctors and all. Even uh, physiotherapy, they keep on doing physiotherapy. <clears throat> and proper diagnosis of Morton's neuroma is very important. 
and this is also we should not neglect and we should always have, have in our dd so thank you so much and now we have dr arun maya sir our uh, second moderator he is uh, joined us he was in a meeting so i welcome you all uh, to dr arun maya sir into this meeting thank you sir and uh, now we have second speaker uh, dr vandana dr ravi yes. dr ravi will introduce dr vandana talwar yeah hi um dr vandana is a renowned uh, physiotherapist from delhi and uh, she is attached with uh, port sadarati of india and uh, uh, she was associated with uh, commonwealth games and olympics also and uh, she is a world champion with various sports uh, amazingly a um, lot of gymnastics too and uh, she has been uh, awarded best physiotherapist by times research media and uh, uh, also honored by badminton association and she has excellent award in fitness workshops and uh, uh, thank you dr vanna and uh, please take away and also i, I have a, a request as uh, vanna is bringing up her uh, presentation to all the other presenters please make it uh, uh, within the given time of uh, less uh, 10 minutes to 15 minutes and also we will have a hard stop uh, in about uh, uh, 40 minutes from now so we need to make sure that uh, we close up the thing thank you very much Thank you, Dr. Ravi Kamipali and other participants. So, shall I uh, share my screen? Yeah, please. Okay. So thank you everyone here. I'm really honored to speak here in the India Podiatry Association, and uh, it's very interesting stream podiatry where I'm working with Dr. A. P. S. Suri and Dr. Shailesh and other uh, physios, and learning new things. And uh, uh, so my topic today is podiatry and sports injuries. so far like being a sports physio i have already been like involved with various injuries but foot mechanism has its own role and if we work on it we can really prevent sports injuries at the initial level like when we work up to the training level for the kids then we can if we examine their foot also if we evaluate then we can really work uh, and we can improve and add up their performance from early childhood itself so what are sports injuries uh it refers to the kind of injuries that mostly occur during the sports or during the training or exercises it may result from the accidents while others are basically due to poor training practices improper equipments lack of conditioning insufficient warm up stretching and foot biomechanics so uh, where you can see the most of the injuries it is it included in the musculoskeletal system which includes your muscles bones ligaments and your tissue like cartilage so we can see that the common injuries are basically in sports are normal stress and strain and sprains in the normal training periods and uh, your ankles knees are affected more so as uh, dr dhara has already uh, explained about the foot functions so just take up quickly that what it does it support your body weight it provides the balance it acts as a shock absorber it uh, transfers the ground reaction forces and uh, it also compensate for the proximal misalignments so this is the ankle joint which is made up of osseous bone and the bones uh, the ankle and below the foot includes the hind foot mid foot and fore foot and so the if we come uh, across the muscles there are uh, ankle and foot muscles which uh, is divided into extrinsic muscles and in extrinsic and intrinsic so in extrinsic there are posterior compartment lateral compartment and anterior compartment so uh, what are the risk factors when our foot biomechanics is altered what can be the injuries so it it may be due to the intrinsic abnormalities it can be due to extrinsic or maybe due to sports imposed deficiencies so basically in the intrinsic abnormality 
these, it happens due to the malalignment of the body parts, instability of your joints, your muscle strength imbalance, weakness in the muscles, inflexibility. And the examples, if you take up the foot morphology, then the high arch, like the pescavus with the uh, uh, flat feet, pest planus with the moderate rigs, which can include the IT band inflexibility, which is called as ITB syndrome, which is very common sports injury among the players. And due to this altered uh, foot mechanics, there is a genu valgus also, which is higher risk for patello, uh, patello femoral syndrome. So there are various muscles which are protecting the various ankle functions and the dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, medial aspect, the lateral aspect. So there are the three arches, anterior, transverse arch, lateral longitudinal arch, the medial longitudinal arch. And they have various functions because uh, they serve basically two main functions, which is mobility and stability. So first, the foot must accept the weight during the early stance phase and adapt to various surfaces shapes. And to accomplish the mobility function, it should the plantar arch must be flexible enough to allow the feet to dampen the impact of weight bearing forces, superimpose the rotational motions, adapt to the changes in the supporting surfaces, and for the stability functions, the arches must all distribute the weight throughout the foot for proper weight bearing and conversion of the flexible foot to a rigid ligure. Like we have seen in various sports like table tennis, coco, and uh, lawn tennis players and footballers that there is a quick motion of their foot. They have to kick, they have to, in coco, they have to do the rotational movements. In tennis, they have to do a lot of agility and do a speed workout. So your foot plays very important role. If your arches are not supporting you well, then you may have risk for the sports injuries. So as we have already seen that there are, uh, these are the types of the feet like your normal flat feet and high arch feet. So there are various muscular contribution to the arches which really makes the muscle to work proper. And the muscular support is provided to the medial longitudinal arch during the gait, which is very important by the tibialis posterior. And there are other muscles also which plays important role in the lateral stability, which is the pronius longus. And as I come to know the post injury, so posture and gait analysis is very, very crucial because the center of gravity, it only assigns the feet alignment that what, what kind of injuries, whether it is on the medial or, or on the lateral side, what kind of gait you have. So it affects your already your posture and gait. So this is the flat feet where you can see this is a high arch. And uh, when you have a flat feet, so it can cause the, you can see the knee is in the valgus position, which is, uh, which may lead to uh, the shin split also. And uh, it can add up to the stress to the knee, which can lead to the patellofemoral syndrome also, and MTSS also, medial tibial stress syndrome, which is a common sports injury uh, among the players. The another thing is what we face is the heel pain. Like most of the players complains of the heel pain. So the reason can be various like HLS pain, heel spur, plantar fasciitis. There can be nerve entrapment also. So we need to rule out the heel pain also and how we can uh, correct it. So these are the pronated and supinated foot which really affects your uh, uh, posture and gait also. So uh, here we discussed that why Q angle is very important. Why? Because it is the indicator of the biomechanical functions in the lower extremity. And its measurements also reflects the effect of cordyceps mechanism on the knee. So when we assess it correctly, it supplies very useful information concerning the alignment of the pelvis, leg and foot. So these are the normal... Uh, 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 the degrees like that falls between 18 to 22 degree. Males are usually at the lower end of this range and female because of the wider pelvis tends to have higher measurements. So how you measure it? The Q angle is the angle which is formed by the line drawn from the anterior superior iliac spine to the center of patella and second line is drawn from the center of patella to the tibial tubercle. So the angle formed by these two lines is called as Q angle. And here you can see the deformity. This is the normal where the uh, angle is just less than 15 degree. And if it is more than 20, then it is a knot, which is a valgus knee. And if it is less than 10, then this is a bow leg, which is varus knee. So due to this uh, effect of the foot, 
the common injury what we can see uh, is acl which is anterior cruciate ligament injury because when the player like the tennis player or the kho kho player or kabaddi player when they twist their knee because they have a lot of rotation they have a lot of uh, speed and agility and they have to coordinate their muscle very fast so in these cases these acl injuries are very common if your foot mechanics biomechanics is not working proper so what are the other examples of nerve injuries which is overuse injuries is the tarsal tun tunnel syndrome it is also very common injury which we can see in sports person and it happens due to the hyperpronation or maybe due to the overtraining ganglions so what is this tarsal tunnel syndrome is nothing but it is a compression or squeezing on the posterior tibial nerve that produces these symptoms anywhere along the path of nerve which uh, runs inside of your ankle into the foot which is a very narrow passage so it may get compressed due to the repeated pressures like repeated landing uh, when you are doing some hard trainings or even in your daily uh, routine training practices so there are the common other injuries is the achilles tendon the rupture can may occur maybe due to the sprain first sprain has happened and if you have ignored then the there can be a rupture also if it gets ignored so achilles tendonitis it is basically seen in runners and jumpers athletes the micro tears from the repetitive uh, impact loading and what are the risk factors it is due to overuse of your muscles your age factor your poor shoe wear and training errors also affect your achilles tendon so other injury ligament uh, is uh, ligament overuse injury is plantar fasciitis this is very common injury which we see in our players which may occur due to the achilles inflexibility due to pus cavus or planus hyperpronation worn out running shoes leg length discrepancy overtraining and intrinsic foot muscle weakness so here we come to know that why injury prevention is so important it is important why because the gait analysis another important component is gait analysis which has uh, the uh, you can say the stance phase Uh, which includes the heel strike mid stance and propulsion and another is swing phase so it comprises the 60% to 40% of your total gait analysis this is very important because there you can judge the plantar pressures like already the, dr dhara has uh, told in detail that how you have to measure those uh, via pedo scan and foot scanners or the treadmill methods so we need to rule out these so excessive plantar pressures what they do they do the uh, uh, they have uh, they can contribute to the pain and injury and in otherwise in healthy people also they contribute to the skin breakdown in patients with diabetes and peripheral neuropathy so pressure under the first metatarsal head also increases the arch height and as one might expect the soft tissue under the forefoot and the heel act as a cushion so these soft tissues are also affected and the tissue thickness may decrease due to the increase in pressure so that greater stress to the heel during the walk occur at the heel strike so that's why the gait analysis is very important and it depends if your foot function is normal the function uh, foot uh, functionality is normal then you can prevent your sports injury so here we conclude that the postural stability is also affected by the foot position because this is your foot knee and hip and even the lower back which are affected by your posture of foot so you can say in the close chain which is a static dynamic uh, in the static assessment you can see this is a valgus knee which is the calcaneal erosion adduction and plantar flexion of talus medial rotation of talus and tibia and fibula so valgus at the knee joint similarly in the close chain movement uh, it is a calcaneal inversion which, ha which has led to the varus at the knee which may leads to various uh, sports injury risk factors so uh, what we all can do to prevent these sports injuries we as uh, we have already seen that orthotics plays a very important role we can customize the footwear we can provide them the good running shoes good training shoes as well if they customize if they will wear customized shoe then definitely they can add up to their performance in their sports so ankle evaluation is very important when it comes to the physical therapist we just need to rule out not only the treatment but the prevention so here we have to evaluate the uh, gait the range of motion foot assessments strength swelling pain and after the thorough evaluation we need to provide the treatment with corrective training methods and use of some modalities electrical stimulation 
And of course, the orthotics and insoles should be given to correct the foot arches to minimize the plantar pressures. So the methods to prevent and treat sports injuries are evaluation of foot, gait analysis, PRP methods to treat injuries, shockwave therapy, corrective training methods, and postural corrective exercises. So here we conclude the role of a dietary in sports is injury is really advanced mode to prevent and treat injuries. So thanks and let's work in team because team works always divide the task and multiply the success. Thank you so much. So if you can stop your uh, screen sharing the Bandana. Yes. Thank you. Good presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll start the presentation with uh, uh, Bipin. Um, Bipin uh, is, uh, I'm going to start screen sharing my thing here. Oh, Gurleen? Okay, Gurleen. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gurleen, yeah, okay. It's Gurleen's lecture. Okay, okay go ahead. Um, uh, Amar, introduce her, please. Yeah, Dr. Palvi. Uh, Palvi yeah. is invited. Okay. Yeah. It's a great pleasure for me to uh, now welcome our next young and dynamic uh, second generation podiatrist to uh, the talk. Uh, she is Dr. Gurleen Suri. Uh, she's a practicing uh, podiatrist in New Delhi. And uh, she has recently completed her uh, uh, bachelor's in podiatry from Northampton University in UK. Uh, she is also a registered practitioner with Health and Care a Professional Council. She is member of Royal College of Podiatry UK. Uh, she is specialized into wound care, biomechanics, and offloading techniques uh, in diabetic food. Uh, she is working on an article right now, uh, which is emphasizing on the acu uh, accurate. Uh, uh, how accurate are smartphones application to detect melanoma? Um, to add to it, uh, she is also daughter of uh, our uh, esteemed uh, president, uh, Dr. APS Suri. And uh, no other mentor can uh, uh, do the justice like uh, he is doing. And uh, Gurleen is learning very well. And mm. we will see a rising star soon in our uh, society. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gurleen, the other floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Palvi, for this wonderful introduction. So it's an honor to be a part of this. Sorry, it's an honor to be a part of this wonderful webinar. So today I would be talking about what are the causes of heel pain. Um, starting with estimatedly over two million of uh, people each year receive treatment heel pain, and heel pain is one of the most common uh, foot problems that the podiatrists encounter in their profession. There isn't an age limit for the heel pain. It's usually seen for ages between 8 to 80. And one-fourth of the cases are bilaterally. So heel pain, heel pain can be divided uh -huh. into two parts, which would be plantar or subcalcaneal or posterior or retrocalcaneal pain. Uh, the posterior retrocalcaneal heel pain can be subdivided into bursitis. So bursitis is the inflammation of the bursa. It can be superficial or deep. When it's superficial, you can easily palpate it at the um, uh, at the posterior aspect of the heel, and it would uh, it would be easily squeezable. For a deep bursitis, that is uh, that is mostly an indication for a pre Achilles tendinopathy, and uh, an MRI or an ultrasound can be diagnostic uh, diagnostic therapy for that. So after that comes the Achilles tendinopathy, which is uh, which can further be divided into non insertional and insertional. That we'll talk about in a bit. Then we have the retrocalcaneal exposures and haglund comity. So uh, what happens is that is kind of when a bone next exposures take place, a bony overgrowth is found in the calcaneal region. Uh, can be is is very common in runners. So if you can see in the photo, you can see the areas where we can palpate darkly stand with the then we have the retrocalcaneal exotosis, which is at the posterior of the calcaneus. And Hagrin's deformity would be seen a, a bit of laterally on the calcaneus. Moving on, uh, Achilles tendinopathy is, as I said, divided into insertional and non-insertional. 
so with insertion uh, acne tendinopathy it's usually seen in a higher age group of 50 to uh, older patients and uh, the patients are usually overweight can be associated with flat feet equinus uh, tight calf muscles the patient would uh, would complain of gradual pain coming across mostly when they do a lot of walking uh, it can it can easily be misdiagnosed as a haglund since it's right there where the haglund deformity takes place as well then we have the non insertional acne tendinopathy which is seen mostly in the younger age group from 20 to 30 years of year old of year old uh, they complain of pain in the morning or after aggressive exercising so if they're doing weight uh, weight exercises or doing a lot of running that's when they um, that's when they experience the pain they would describe the pain as very aggressive and mostly they would say that they have to rest in order for it to go away um when you when you do a, cl a clinical test they you would observe a quinus or limited ankle dorsiflexion present in there moving on um as i explained haglund's is the enlargement of the calcaneal bone so over here you can see how a normal calcaneus looks and you can see a slight overgrowth of the bone in a haglund's deformity usually um it's caused with uh, friction and since the achilles tendinopathy in uh, achilles tendon inserts in here usually patients uh, are very confused about where exactly the pain is and it's very aggressive uh, it can be easily treated with with a chylectomy where you can just shave off the bone that's how you would see in a clinical uh, clinical practice every day a slight enlargement and when you try to palpate it it would be quite bony so that is another uh, uh, another dif uh, diagnosis of haglund's moving on to the subcalcaneal pain uh, the etiology for subcalcaneal pain uh, would be when the patient has excessive foot pronation so if the patient's flat feet and uh, while gait analysis you would see that uh, the patient pronates a lot and has an abductory twist uh, then you would also observe decreased ankle dorsiflexion to equinus tight calf muscle another reason for subcalcaneal heel pain would be trauma to the bone or the tendons present there arthritis uh, lower back pain infection tumor etc one of the most common heel pain a uh, uh, subcalcaneal heel pain is the plantar fasci uh, fasciitis so the symptoms for plantar fasciitis is pain in the plantar heel often uh, described as all over the sole uh, it's very the patient would not be specifically telling you where exactly the pain is uh then you would the patient would say either is it the pain is usually in the mornings when they wake up or they can find it after a long period of time so when they are uh, at the end of the day when they've done a lot of walking or tedious exercises that's when the pain starts nature of the pain would be described as a burning sensation all over the feet and one of the diagnostic tests that we can do is the jax test so what we do is we slightly dorsiflex the first toe incorporating the vinlas mechanism and if the patient complains of pain over the sole that is when we uh, that is when we know it's a plantar fascia another thing that uh, jack test diagnosis is a uh, hallux limitus so when we dorsiflex the toe the toe should make a 60 degree angle with the foot if that doesn't occur you can easily see that there is a hallux limitus present and if the if the toe does not dorsiflex at all it would then suggest a hallux rigidus it could be another thing for the plantar heel pain um so this is a photo from a survey that um, i had read about plantar fasciitis top 3 areas of pain so you can see more the massive pain occurs in the insertional plantar fasciitis near the fdb tendon um so again plantar fasciitis is uh, associated with morning pain and the calcaneal tendon tightness then another type of plantar fascia is the enthesopathies so it could be unilateral or bilateral if it's a bilateral pain then uh, the patient would complain of uh, pain in the back area as well and uh, there's another morning stiffness which is the inflammatory joint disease so if you palpate the joint the ankle joint you would observe slight inflammation in there another plantar fascia type is the rupture so when a patient uh, has a ruptured plantar fascia the pain would be very acute and aggressive knife like you will observe intensive bruising on the areas so another kind of subcalcaneal pain is the heel spur heel spur is very similar to haglund's except the position so you would see haglund's on the 
retro calc whereas the yields per occurs on the planter calc area so you can see this is the slight overgrowth which which occurs uh, usually the position would be superior to the plantar fascia and flexor digitorum brevis attachment uh, it can be caused due to plantar fascia entheses uh, obesity aggressive exercises friction increased age and history of other heel pain so flat feet arthritis and neuropathy etc coming to the nerve entrapment or compression syndrome so as you can see the red dotted line that shows the tibial nerve so if the patient complains of pain alongside the alongside the red dotted line that is what you would see it would be a tibial nerve entrapment again with the tarsal tarsal tunnel syndrome as explained by dr vandana earlier that is when the post uh, nerve entrapment occurs and that would be the blackened area you have the calcaneal branch tibial nerve so that is the blue area right there and in the end you have the first uh, back, the baxter's nerve which is right here it is the first branch of lateral plantar nerve so the patient would be uh, inable uh, the inability of the patient to do a jack's test on the fifth toe that is what it would be uh, another diagnostic test that we can do is the valix test and a tunnel's test so valix is a uh, valix test is when we compress the tarsal tunnel nerve so when you compressing the posterior nerve the patient would complain of pain and in the tunnels you lightly tap on the nerve a nerve area and same the patient would then show symptoms of uh, pain if the entrapments there uh, then we have the sacroiliac entrapment where the nerve entrapment occurs in the vertebrae the patient would complain of pain all over the feet going down and the patient would not show any babinski response so the ankle reflex would be minimized or diminished again another pain we have is the neuropathic pain which we see which is a very common pain that you observe in diabetic clinics so when you have a patient and you suspect neuropathy make sure you do the uh, needed sensory test so use a 10 gram monofilament or a 128 hertz tuning fork to see if the pain is uh, there the patient would usually describe a neuropathic pain as a burning sensation due uh, mostly during when they're sleeping and it's quite severe moving on to the bone fragments so uh, if you have a calcaneal st uh, stress fracture uh, the clinical features that the patient would uh, then tell you would be there would be a bone a bony point tenderness diffused pain when the patient is weight bearing a uh, test that you can do is a squeeze test so if you squeeze the medial and lateral calcaneus the patient would then complain of intensive pain again another one is the pagets disease which is which occurs due to deficiency of vitamin d so you would observe a tibia a, a bone bowed tibia in the patient so when you have a bowed tibia it puts in uh, intensive pressure on the heel which would then also be associated with flat feet uh, hallux limitus etc so once you start treating those aspects of the uh, diagnosis the heel pain heel pain would uh, on its own subside another another aspect is the tumor so if you have a bone tumor <laughs> the patient would complain of uh, night pains there would be a deep bone pain that the patient would not be easily able to describe but would say there is pain all over the bone area then you have the severus disease severus disease is usually seen in the dolsons and that is when the uh, when the posterior calcaneus inflammation takes place uh, takes place so the calcaneus intensively in, uh, gets inflamed and the patient has severe pain in that so the patient cannot uh do jumping exercises or walk for a long time or run for a long time coming to the examination of foot and ankle so uh when the patient comes in do a proper and intensively uh, intensive uh, gait gait analysis so make sure you see if the patient has excessive pronation or supination if the patient has a abductor twist if it if he or she has a flexor substitution etc then you can also do a foot posture index to so see if there is a, a tibionavicular bulging if the calcaneus is everted or inverted check for the arch how big the arch is um, then you can do another test which is the single tip toe heel raise it is to exclude ttdd so when you doing a tip toe raise it isolates all the muscles and the posterior tibial muscle is the only muscle working so if the patient is suffering from ttdd uh the patient won't be able to easily do a heel a uh, tip toe raise another test as i explained would be the jacks test to minimize the um 
occurrence of various like functional hallux remitters or plantar fasciitis, etc. The diagnostic investigations that we can do is the plain radiographs for so we can have an X-ray for stress fractures, foreign body, osteomyelitis, cysts, tumor. You can do an ultrasound to confirm plantar fasciitis edema, uh, PTDD, what stage the PTDD is on. If there's a plantar fascia rupture, that uh, we can have an ultrasound done for that. Then a CT scan is usually done for CT uh, for stress fractures. You have MRI done for uh, again for PTDD tendinopathy if there's a rupture or what stage the uh, PTDD is on a bone bruising, the thickening of plantar fascia if there's any edema present, etc. Then you have a bone scan done usually for uh, seeing if there's any activity present in the bone. If the bone is going soft or any calcification is taking place, a bone scan can be done. You do, uh, we can have blood tests done for infections such as uh, we can have a CBC, ESR, uh, RF done for that. And in the end, we have the nerve conduction studies. So that is where we use a machine to observe the nerve impulse uh, passing through the nerves present. If the impulse is blocked, we know where the entrapment is upgraded. Uh, coming down to the management part. So, if you for the management, we have the uh, the first and the foremost would be weight loss. So, advise the patient for um, exercising, diet control, etc. Then, appropriate footwear. So, make sure the footwear that the patient is using has a uh, white toe box. The, there's an arch support present. Then, we have proper ankle support. So, maybe you ask them to use a Velcro or a lace-up shoe. Uh, make sure there's enough space in the shoe for the foot and there's no friction uptrain. Use appropriate insoles, like uh, if the patient has Achilles tendinopathy, give him, a, give him or a, a heel raise. It's a, uh, if there's a plantar fascia, make sure you're giving an arch support. And if it's a hallux limiters, give a functional hallux wedge and accordingly. Uh, the physical therapies that we suggest would be eccentric stretching. So make sure the patient, if the patient has equinus, you give them proper calf, uh, calf stretches, etc. Then we have the rice therapy, which is rest, um, rest, ice compression, elevation. Uh, we have the NSADs for inflammation, boopy became block, night splints and air cast boots. So that is an example for air cast and a night, splint boot, uh, uh, night splints. This is usually for immobilizing the foot. We have steroid injections as well. So some of the injection therapies we have are corticosteroid injections. Corticosteroids are very short term, have short term relief, and usually if they do not assist in the treatment rather than just give pain relief to the patient. Then we have the bupivacaine 0.5%, which is a long lasting LA. Another very successful treatment that we have observed is the PRP therapy. So this is the machine that, the PR, that we use PRP for. So we take the patient's own blood and then centrifugate it. Uh, after that, the components that have separated, we, re we take the Buffy coat and then inject it into the area where the trauma, uh, trauma is occurring, where the pain is occurring. What happens is we are then um, injecting growth factors into the area which will stimulate regeneration of the tissue and then incorporate into the healing. Another very uh, successful therapy that we have observed is shockwave therapy. There was a wonderful webinar given by Dr. Palvi in the uh, last, webinar, uh, last webinar where she explained the different types of shockwave therapy. So I would not go too much into it. Uh, usually it's used for plantar fascia and it has given us successful results. Coming to the surgical aspect, so we have a lot of surgeries that we can perform, which would be a neurolysis, chylectomy, uh, medial osteotomy for uh, PTTD, etc. But then we should make sure that the patient is aware of the complications and risk factors associated with it. This is another interesting uh, surgery that I've observed. It's, it's the topaz radio frequency surgery, five millimeters apart. And then using a K wire or a needle, we then start to uh, incise the uh, area. What we're trying to do is we start, uh, we're trying to stimulate angiogenesis, which would then incorporate healing response into the foot. This is usually uh, very commonly done for plantar fascia and has given us very positive. I to know what happened to uh, yeah. my connection. Your connection went away. 
so uh, so you, uh, this is the references that I've used for the TPT, and that would be it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Gurleen. Um, I know the last, uh, I think last minute we had some hitch there that uh, was uh, unexpected, but uh, I think we will go on quickly because we have a hard stop in 20 yes. minutes. Yes. Um, yes. So we'll go to Dr. Vipin. Vipin, you only have 15 minutes and yes, uh, only five minutes for discussion. And uh, 20 Vipin, uh, we would like if you can finish in about 10 to 12 minutes. <clears throat> that sure, would sir. be nice. Then we can have 10 minutes of uh, question answers because I'm seeing a lot of questions are there. And uh, there's a lot of questions we can ask. Vipin, uh, you can share your screen. Yes. So Dr. Vipin is an uh, orthosis and prosthosis uh, guy working in Surat with along with Dr. Shalish. And uh, his topic for today is importance of prosthosis and orthosis in podiatry. Dr. Vipin. Yeah, hello. 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 You can start, Vipin. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, today, my topic is importance of prosthesis and orthosis in podiatry. Uh, here I uh, add some uh, point. Uh, uh, what is the uh, outline of prosthesis? Uh, uh, definition of prosthesis, indication of prosthesis, uh, and amputation. Amputation of foot, ankle, and lower limb, and uh, type of prosthesis. And uh, last one is the importance of prosthesis. Uh, uh, what is the definition of prosthesis? A prosthesis is an artificial replacement for any or all the lower or upper extremity. It is a device that is designed to replace as much as possible the function or appearance of missing limb or body part. Uh, here I uh, share indication uh, peripheral vascular disease uh, is a most common with or without diabetes, uh, trauma, and uh, burns. Vipin, sorry to interrupt you. Please go yeah. through slideshow, slideshow. Yes, sir. Please, uh, slideshow because you can you use the slide full screen. Your slide you can be expanded. Full screen. Full screen. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Sir. Full screen. Full screen. How is okay, sir? Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, indication uh, peripheral vascular disease uh, with or without uh, diabetes, trauma, uh, mostly like in young, uh, young patient, uh, burns, uh, forced by uh, infection, and uh, uh, several community like congenital or Hello. Yes, Vipin, continue. Yeah, continue. yeah, uh -huh. yes, yeah, sir. Uh, science amputation, chopper amputation, uh, list France amputation, uh, tra uh, trans metatarsal amputation, toe amputation, and metatarsal phalangeal amputation. Uh, Uh, and uh, amputation level of bilony uh, amputation, knee disarticulation amputation, uh, above knee amputation, and hip disarticulation amputation. Here I uh, suggest some uh, uh, types of prosthesis, uh, which uh, uh, four foot amputation and partial foot amputation, like uh, silicon cosmetic and uh, functional prosthesis. Uh, here, uh, uh, so uh, some uh, in my uh, one patient, patient uh, has. Uh, 
partial foot amputation uh, so now he he has looking a silicon uh, prosthesis good looking and uh, one is a carbon fiber uh, laminated socket with a carbon paint clad it's a, a science prosthesis uh, and some here uh, belloni prosthesis avoni prosthesis and knee disarticulation prosthesis and hip disarticulation prosthesis we can uh, provide for patient amputee patient uh, what is the importance of uh, prosthesis uh, uh, a prosthesis is used to provide an individual who has an amputated uh, limb with the opportunity to perform functional task particularly ambulation which may not be possible without limb uh the pros the type of prosthesis is determined by the extent of an amputation my screen is hang now hello yeah uh and uh, now uh, what is the outline of orthosis uh some uh, points i had uh, definition and uh, type of foot and ankle orthosis and uh, importance what is the importance of orthosis uh now uh, definition and orthosis is an external device which controlling force to improve body alignment improve function immobilize the injured area prevent to or improve a deformity product a joint and limb uh and reduce pain and limit uh, to provide a prospective feedback uh foot orthosis are specially made device to design to support and comfort patient feet uh orthotics are only fabricated after uh, a podiatrist and orthotist has conduct a complete evaluation of prosthetic feet ankle and leg so the orthotic can accommodate your unique foot structure and pathology uh, now generally uh, in a more rigid deformity patient's foot uh, the softer or more accommodative orthotic device can be done uh, if patient has flexible deformity then uh, we uh, we go for a more rigid and orthotic device uh here type uh, type of orthosis uh, there are two type uh, category of foot orthosis uh, one is a functional orthosis and second one is a accommodative orthosis uh, now i saw some uh, functional uh, orthosis uh, we can give a, a, a functional orthosis for patients to control and the subtalar joint and uh, foot biomechanics uh they may be used to treat uh, foot pain caused by abnormal motion uh and also use to treat injury such as uh, medial uh, tibial uh, syndrome flat feet and uh, uh, plantar fasciitis and bursitis and uh, here i uh, add some pictures uh, for a different type of uh, functional orthosis like uh, uh, ankle foot orthosis for uh, uh, foot drop and uh, some uh, partial foot amputation with uh, afo uh, with filler and uh, offloading orthosis and uh, supramedullary orthosis for uh, uh, better stability two minutes more yeah sir uh, and uh, now second one is accommodative orthosis uh, is a goal to decrease the shear force under the foot and uh, redistribute the body weight uh, more evenly throughout the uh, foot surface then we would use softer material uh these are designed to fabricate uh, softer and uh, provide additional cushioning and support uh here uh, we are used treated to diabetes ulcer pain uh, uh fellas on bottom of the foot like heel spur uh, neuropathic condition and other uncomfortable condition as we as most important fit here i saw some uh, picture uh, like customized insole and uh, soft cushioning heel and uh, uh diabetic uh, uh, offloading uh, uh, splint like uh, crow charcoal tree care worker and uh, some partial foot uh, insole with filler and what is the importance of orthosis orthosis is has a become a need for the present uh, generation uh, in the present scenario number of people suffer to pain injury back pain 
colon arch and uh, general problem orthosis is based aid in uh, to heal and uh, uh, help to proper functioning of the body as the whole weight of the uh, body uh, fall of the foot therefore proper function of the leg play a significant role yeah thank you thank you uh, dr bipin it's a it was a nice presentation on types of orthosis uh, for mainly for diabetic foot patients and uh, we have some uh, questions uh, because bipin of the can you stop your screen share yeah yeah bipin sure. in share yeah yeah <clears throat> uh, ravi uh, quickly uh, if you have any questions or i'll go directly to one question for dr thara yeah, this please. is by dr pradeep from aligarh uh dr pradeep is asking is mri or ct scan indicative of motons neuroma uh, dr dhara uh, yes can mri that. can definitely uh, <coughs> diagnose motons neuroma but we have kind of uh, uh, clinical analysis plus special tests like a speech test kind of thing it can easily diagnose motons neuroma so usually we don't need to uh, take out for the mri Uh, if patient want then definitely for the further confirmation can go for mri okay uh, uh, dr dhara there is one more question for you by dr ekta from maharashtra she is hmm. asking uh, if the patient has got an ulcer on the <clears throat> distal aspect of the toe uh, yeah. how will you offload it if there is an ulcer is a diabetic patient if a diabetic patient has an ulcer on the distal aspect of the toe uh how can what could be the best offloading technique for the distal aspect of the toe we need to go yep. for with the uh, kind of a rocker bottom or the four foot offloader uh, diabetic uh, sandal or shoe plus with that we need to customize the foot orthotic in such a way like if it is just a tip of toe we can raise it with the toe press a very good toe press plus four foot offloading by raising the metatarsals uh, head we can offload the distal part of it yeah. and very important is in uh, distal effects most it's on the anterior part of the toe yeah. uh, most distal part so sometimes patients have claw toes or hammer toes so in claw toes you can just do a tenotomy also a lot of time we do tenotomy and we see the ulcer heals in about uh, one to two weeks of time uh, it was a very good answer uh, there's a question for gulin how useful is uh, prp in diabetic wound healing by dr ramjit uh, dhud from canada uh, dr i welcome uh, dr dhud also from canada he is a very senior consultant in prp and uh, stem cell therapy and uh, he has joined us from canada so i welcome you to for this um so so uh, can you repeat the question once again the question please, again, please. the role of prp the question in, is how useful is prp in diabetic uh, wound healing so uh, we have shown quite intensive uh, positive results in wound healing because when when we would use the prp therapy what we are doing is we taking the patient's own uh, productive blood and then trans uh, then transfusing the buffy code which has the growth factors present in it Hello. into the yeah so when we are injecting the growth factors into it it stimulates the regeneration of the tissue uh, due to which the granulation occurs so if the patient's uh, it kind of uh, the healing capacity of the patient increases 10 times and if the patient if the usually the wound would take let's say 10 weeks to heal with prp we have seen results that it takes twice as uh, quicker and it can be healed into 5 weeks so i would say that it has shown quite positive results Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. it was a nice uh, was answer, nice. Gulin. There's another question to you, Gulin. How many Doctor Dhut is asking? How many injections of PRP can be given to a patient who is suffering with plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis? Is is PRP indicated in plantar fasciitis? And how many injections can you give? so in my clinical practice i have usually seen that if we have given just one injection therapy that has shown quite positive results so with only one therapy and then also with a, a combination of offloading and proper insoles the patient uh, the 
plantar fasciitis is treated easily and patient does not have any problems so i would say just one therapy but then in some cases there might be when the when the tendon is degenerated to a intensive aggressive uh, uh, issue we might give two therapies but one should be enough so it's Yeah. And I would say it's quite indicative. Thank for you, uh, thank you, Gulen. Thank It you. Was a nice answer, sir. Nice uh, there's uh, uh, there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, other questions I'm seeing, but I would like to invite Dr. Arun Maya, sir, on the on the webinar. He has some comments on uh, orthosis, biomechanics, and importance of of loading in podiatry physiotherapy group. Uh, a quick. Yeah, very good evening to all of you. And out, at the outset, I congratulate and compliment all the speakers for providing an overview of entire podiatry, not just restricting only to the diabetic foot management. Dr. Dara, Dr. Vandana, and Dr. Gurlin started with the overview of the podiatry and how exactly we can diagnose as well as we can manage them conservatively. And also, Bipin had given an overview of what is the importance or the role of uh, Orthotics in uh, the podiatry management. Uh, as uh, the especially the offloading, I think in terms of the diabetic foot ulcer or the foot specific pathology, uh, the most important thing is then assessment is very very important, and we need to identify where exactly the pathology, and then we need to go for a specific offloading of whether it may be an insole or it may be a corrective footwear or any type of. orthotics devices can be given considering what exactly the pathology uh, in in terms of the foot pathology or the pain which is highlighted by dr gurlev heel pain when you look at the heel pain there are multiple uh, causes or the pathologies can induce the heel pain or the referred pain so that identifying that specific uh, pathology is important as well as uh, providing an appropriate uh, uh, orthotics to that area so considering the time constraint i think uh, i will just conclude at the i once again i congratulate all the speaker for an excellent presentations as well as giving an, an overview about the importance of podiatry not just rest restricting only to the clinical even to the sports or even in the other uh, line of management congratulations to all of you yeah oh, thank, thank you. you thank you dr arun maya sir uh, I, i would request dr palvi for vote of thanks and the importance of ippa group in dealing with this type of foot problems and why this group has come up a quick comment from dr palvi and then vote of thanks thank you good evening everyone uh, it's uh, overwhelming that more than 50 of delegates have joined to uh, for the uh, webinar and uh, people from india canada us um, are here so it shows that uh, what is the need of the hour Uh, why we are combining podiatry and physiotherapy because as a physiotherapist we have a greater workforce in india more than 14 lakh members are already there in uh, physiotherapy association working uh, with the different specialization and uh, if you've seen the presentation of dr dhara she is an orthopedic side of uh, physiotherapist and dr vadana she is a sports physiotherapist but there are so many common uh, anomalies that we see as a physiotherapist on a regular basis and if we treat them only by exercises sometimes it works very well sometimes it is half hearted uh, lead and the results are not there so if you have a over pronated ankle and you are trying to uh, treat a uh, lateral or lateral ligament injury you might need combination of both physiotherapy and podiatry to stabilize the foot and get greater result uh in future we will try to have more educative uh, uh, webinars and workshop for you to understand what is podiatry and how you can integrate this uh, into your uh, uh, regular practice so we will be soon coming up with uh, our membership also and then the uh, there will be like uh, various educative webinars which will be on monthly basis with newsletter and everything reaching to you to keep you updated uh, so all this initiative we will soon um uh, start and uh, uh, today i would thank like you. to conclude thank this you. webinar yeah thank you dr palvi for the nice uh, uh, comments and ravi ravi last to you yeah basically this was an amazing presentation and also bringing back to what i initially started uh, discussing regarding nutrition uh, recently dr suri had a amazing uh, one article that he found wherein he found obesity uh, imparts changes in the toe 
wherein the fat deposits even under the toe and there is rigidity and all. I think I will try to find out that link and repost in the IPA groups and uh, let's yes, continue to that. learn I each other. That. Yeah, so let, if you have that, repost it in the group, uh, Amar. And the, thank you guys. Sure, I'll do it. I have to run and slow. Um, yeah. Wish we could have more questions, but uh, um, yes. we'll continue there, later. There are some questions. There are some questions on the uh, group chat. So what we'll do is that we have the emails of the questions. So because of the shortage of time, we are not able to take that, but we'll post the answers by Dara or by Gulin or Vipin. There's one question for Dara. Uh, if I can uh, read very quickly. Uh, uh, Dr. Dara, any particular brand for prefabricated, custom molded orthotic, what is the price? So you can send it by email. It is there. There's another question also to Dara. Uh, if, there's no if there is no calcaneum in the feet, what will be the orthotic treatment so that the patient can walk properly? So two questions are you for that and Vipin, you have a question. So we can we can send it by email to that. So mm -hmm. I congratulate all the speakers and thank you so much for a nice chat. And we will keep doing more webinars. Dr. Arun Maya sir is doing one on 13th and one on 19th of June. So we hope you will keep you posted for that. And this will be available on YouTube. So Ravi will be posted there. So all the lectures will be available on YouTube for today, uh, under today's day. So thank you so much for joining and uh, have a nice weekend ahead. And thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you all. Thank, thank you all. Just see. Thank you. Thank you.